Thanks for joining us for Mobile Midday News. I'm Sean Kinney, and today's show is brought to you by TelecomCareers.com. It's the industry's largest reg resume database and job board. And we start with one of my favorite days in the whole year, Cyber Monday. A lot of carriers doing promotions today, and also Auction 97 gaining momentum as it nears $38.5 billion. Yeah, that Auction 97, our editor-in-chief, Dan Myers, has been following that real close for almost three weeks now. Dan, can you give us a little bit of an update on what's going on in the broadband spectrum auction? Sure, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, as of today, this morning, uh, like you mentioned, the auctions hit uh, $38.5 billion. Actually, the latest round uh, just finished up a bit ago. Now we're at 38 point, almost $38.8 billion uh, for, for the auction. So it's definitely uh, still got a little momentum going. Uh, the FCC is still going with uh, four rounds of bidding per day. Uh, each round is one hour long. So uh, still a couple more rounds for today. But it uh, looks like it has slowed down a bit from the previous uh, hot pace, but it's still uh, still adding about a billion to a little more than a billion and a half uh, per day. So still a lot of uh, money being thrown at the at the auction uh, as, as, as we speak. In the past, uh, about how long do they usually go on or is it just too hard to tell? It's always hard to tell. I mean, these auctions go until there's no more bids, even on the lowest uh, license. And so there's uh, over 1,600 licenses up for bid, so a lot of licenses that people can bid on. Um, so the auction goes until it's all done. Uh, in the past, auctions have gone you know, in excess of 160, even more than 200 rounds. Uh, right now, we're about round 39, I believe, right now. Uh, so it can still go quite a while. Uh, usually what happens uh, as these auctions drag on is that uh, the bidding uh, usually shortens up a bit, so the FCC will kind of cut back on the length of the rounds and increase the number of rounds per day. So at some point, it'll, it'll increase to probably six rounds per day, then eight rounds per day. Um, at some point, too, it'll get to maybe even 10 rounds per day, each round about 20 minutes. And so uh, the later rounds do come quick and fast, but... Uh, uh, we can still be in for a bit of a, of a ride on this one here, especially with the holidays coming up. Uh, if this goes into Christmas time, uh, there could be some delays there. So uh, this could go into early early January. It's, it's definitely possible to go, to go that long. And you mentioned the holidays there, Dan. Um, you were talking a little about carrier promotions for Cyber Monday today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we're definitely into the mid middle of the or the, the midst of the holiday shopping season. Uh, we had uh, uh, last week uh, Black Friday going off, and, and operators are pretty busy with that. Uh, today being Cyber Monday, uh, another day to kind of throw out some promotions. Uh, I will say, for the most part, operators, at least domestically, have been pretty quiet in, in terms of, of anything new uh, coming out today. Uh, some of the operators have had some device-centric uh, type of offerings, uh, either discounts. Uh, T-Mobile has been pretty aggressive with their iPhones. Uh, offering customers uh, more memory on the devices that they're getting. So if they pay for like an iPhone 6, a uh, 16 gigabyte model, uh, uh, T-Mobile is giving them a 64 gigabyte model for the same price. And so that's kind of the main thing. Uh, but mostly today it's just been uh, just device stuff, uh, you know, inexpensive devices. But you know, for the mobile carriers, they've been so busy over the past couple of months uh, rolling out new rate plans that uh, you can probably give them a little bit of credit or a little bit of a break for taking it easy uh, for now uh, when it comes to new rate plans. But uh, but yeah, for the holidays, it looks like devices will be the main the main focus. Uh, I would still suspect that operators will still be uh, pretty aggressive in rolling out new rate plans at some point too. But but for today at least, uh, it was mostly device device centric when it came to uh, the Cyber Monday deals. Well, you still got some shopping time left. Dan Stormy and I both really like devices. If you haven't gotten us anything yet, <laughs> any kind, not picky. All right. Well, thanks for that analysis, Dan. And uh, speaking of spending some serious cash, American Towers reportedly looking to spend up to one billion dollars to buy a 51 percent share of India's Viom. Viom's a tower company controlled by Tata Teleservices. American Tower reportedly wants to merge Viom's estimated 42,000 towers with the 12,000 towers it already owns in India. That'd be the third major purchase by American Tower in just the last few weeks. Now, Sean, you're working on a story today about actually strengthening towers. Yeah, that's right, Stormy. I had an opportunity to get on the phone earlier with the uh, CEO and uh, president of uh, a major company out of Arizona that does a lot of work for towers and other industrial applications. And what's going on here? Is major tower company Crown Castle has started a pilot project out in Southern California. Crown Castle is working with Pile Medic, that's the Arizona company I mentioned, to strengthen just three of their towers. Now this is, you know, just starting now. You can read more about it on rcrwireless.com. But Crown Castle is a, a major company, and this will be interesting to see how the pilot program goes. In a nutshell, what Pile Medic does is use a composite fabric to wrap the exterior of a tower 
and then they cover it with a resin epoxy that hardens it into a more supportive structure. So uh, aside from making the towers more resistant to earthquakes, which is the major thrust of the pilot in South Carolina or South California, rather, you could also use this to make a tower stronger so it can support more hardware from different carriers. So an interesting concept that uh, we're going to flesh out for you on rcrwirelessnews.com. That is interesting. Yeah, and that'll be uh, actually pretty interesting going forward too, uh, as well, because obviously operators are becoming uh, more and more looking to, to kind of move a lot of the equipment up to the top of the tower, and so for the ability to uh, you know strengthen those towers will be an important part going forward, especially for mobile operators. Again, more spectrum coming to market; uh, they're going to need more antennas up there. Uh, again, moving the equipment up there, so that's going to be a big part of uh, kind of strengthening these towers going forward too. So it'll be interesting to watch how that how that plays yeah, out. Yeah, you and I might get on the phone later and talk about that, Dan. But I'll tell you, one of the things I thought was really interesting about it is the design of the product makes it so that there's no need for guy wires of any sort. So when you're thinking a you know dense downtown urban area where the footprint of the tower can't expand anymore, it's a pretty novel solution. So we'll see how that goes. Very good. Yeah. And speaking of designs, connected cars, that's what we're hearing all about, right? Well, AT&T has been working very hard, and uh, RCR Wireless editor Claudia Bacco actually just posted a story about, we always hear about the AT&T Drive Studio getting a lot of press, but there's also the AT&T Foundry, which is also developing connected car applications and services, one of those being Cascade for Cars. This enables voice and messaging via the vehicle's head unit as opposed to over a Bluetooth link from your smartphone. This allows you to connect multiple devices to a single head unit. Now this is just one of several services that Claudia has featured in her report. And she also just published the World Forum Roundup. It's, they're definitely both worth checking out. Yeah, you know, that was a really interesting uh, story Claudia wrote from the uh, IoT World Forum there in London. I'd encourage our watchers to check that out. And uh, changing gears, going down to Latin America on the Spectrum auction front, something I know Dan knows a lot about. American Mobile's Argentinian subsidiary, subsidiary Claro was just awarded Spectrum to deploy 3G and 4G services. Kerry was awarded six 3G bands for three areas of operation as well as two 4G coverage frequencies throughout the country. Once the payment's made and the deal closes, Claro will be able to start using the acquired 3G portion as well as begin deployment of 4G infrastructure to provide that service. And we've got a good post on our reader forum on the hot topic big data analytics. Now companies are now using the Hadoop data storage and analytics package to make risk management decisions based on customer preferences. And Dan, I think you were just you were talking about that before we came on today. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big part of uh, of telecom kind of going forward. Obviously, you know, big data has become a, a big part uh, with with mobile networks now becoming all IP based. It's a lot easier now for for carriers to really dip into what's happening across their networks. Uh, one, I guess, one challenge for operators though is being able to handle this big uh, uh, depth of, of information now coming across the networks. You know, it's a lot coming across. It's hard to kind of really analyze what's happening there. And so these new technologies coming out, Hadoop is one of those that uh, promises to kind of allow operators to really dive in and really analyze what's going on. I mean, it's, it's great to have this kind of information, but if you can't pull something out of it, uh, it really can't do much good for you. So uh, with this reader forum column today that got posted, uh, yeah, it talks a little bit about, you know, operators being able to use this, uh, this information using Hadoop to kind of really work on risk management as one of the, one of the angles uh, operators can, do, can use to uh, kind of uh, uh, solidify their, their offerings. And so it was a pretty interesting topic. Again, uh, Hadoop is something that's going to be uh, talked about quite a bit moving forward. Uh, I suspect we'll be doing a lot more stories on the topic as well, but I know we've done some in the past, but I suspect we'll have a lot more uh, posted on the topic as well moving forward. All right, that's our editor-in-chief, Dan Myers, joining us from Denver, Colorado. Dan, we always appreciate you coming on and joining us to provide your insight. We want to thank everybody out there for watching, and we also want to thank our sponsor, TelecomCareers.com. Thanks for watching Midday Mobile News. See you tomorrow.